right into game five here. I gotta start my recording. Of course, I wanna get these VODs up as soon as possible for anyone that did miss them. Of course, with 3,600 viewers, that's just phenomenal. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, if this was my stream, the stream would have crashed by now. So, anyways, uh, my luck in streaming is bad. GLHF.TV, big shout out. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So let's go into the game, and we actually have Jungle Basin now. So for some reason, I seen it as the seventh map, and I was assuming that we had to wait till game seven. But nope. Moro's picked Jungle Basin for the fifth game, and uh, it is 2-2. So I guess he just wanted that shouted out for his stream or whatever. But hey, they're talking another language. I don't like that. Translate. But anyways. Uh, so Nani as the light pink is going to be spawning in the bottom right hand corner here on Jungle Basin. And uh, yeah, Moro going to be spawning once again as the green, signature green Terran in the top left hand corner. And uh, I'll take this little bit of a down time of the game to really talk about this map if you haven't seen it. Um, it has uh, a really easily defendable natural expansion uh, right off of your main. It uh, has no other entry points besides the destructible rocks over on the right hand side, which leads to a really long rush distance, or sorry, run distance to the third base which you can take. Um, it's kind of like a back door, but it's also like a secondary entrance to your third base, so it can be very effective. Of course that is completely mirrored, both players do have that. Um, as any Blizzard map seems to have, that is in the ladder pool now, it has a ramp. Uh, I don't know why. They took out Kulas Ravine, which I think was the only map that did not have a ramp. I'm probably wrong, but who knows? I'm probably just not thinking. So um, it does have a ramp, and that leads to another ramp, which actually hides two more bases in the middle of the map, uh, which are so close together, and they are guarded by Zelnaga Watchtowers. And it's important to note, these Zelnaga Watchtowers are just outside of range of a building that you... Uh, a command center or a nexus or a hatchery uh, that you might put up in the middle here. Of course, Zerg, if you have a hatchery there, uh, you can see the creep. But Protoss Terran, it's just out of range, so you still do have to go and scout um, if they are not building any units outside of, or sorry, any buildings outside their command center or nexus. So the Marine is out in time to shoo off this probe. The probe's not going to get any more scouting information, and Moro is throwing up a tech lab. Um, it kind of sounded like he was puking up a tech lab that was kind of wrong so he's uh, throwing down a tech lab yeah there we go curious to see if he's going to get stim once he gets that 100 gas uh, he's still working off one geyser but um, he's getting a second barracks up for so we're not going to see a factory we're not going to see the 111 build like we saw on uh, lost temple but uh, yes it is stim so i'm kind of getting the feel of how moro plays and how moro thinks uh, what i'd like to do is get him on a co-pro cast one week that'd be fantastic uh, I just love Moro's Terran play. I think he's one of the best Terrans in the world right now. Of course, I'm still a little bit more of a fanboy of TLO, but that's just because TLO surprises you. But uh, that's a totally different story. Uh, Nanny, on the other hand, still just, just working off one gateway. He's got his cybernetics core. Uh, once again, he's hiding a pylon. I really like this by Nanny. Uh, of course, especially against a Terran player, but what he's doing is putting up pylons all around his base. And if the Terran does scout that early game with his SCV... Uh, even though he does see the pylon, he won't know which one to scan for if he does choose to go for a scan. If he doesn't go for a scan, he's going to be playing blind for a long time. He doesn't know if it's going to be storm tech, he doesn't know if it's going to be uh, speed lots, or, or I should say charge lots, or blink stalkers. Um, it looks like a probe here almost getting taken out, but he is a little bit too quick for this marine and marauder. He's going to get away safely. And as I was saying, it could be a robotics facility, it could be virtually anything. Uh, Nanny choosing just to go for the Twilight Council and the second gateway. And judging by his past few games, we're going to see either a, a Templar Archives or Charge. But I'm, I don't know, 250 gas. Come on, Dark Shrine, Dark Shrine, Dark Shrine. Yes! Oh, oh I'm just like antsy in my seat now. Uh, Moro here is doing his fast expand with two barracks. He's got a reactor on one and a tech lab on the other. Stim is just finished. I don't think he's going to do a timing push with that. A lot of Terran players do like to use Stim as, as defensive measures. Um, of course, Bio with Stim on defense is so effective. The pr attacking player, just their units just crumble. And I really, li really like this. Nanny's got one f uh, sentry out on the field for a force field. If he tries to get any units... Uh, out to scout this Dark Shrine. 
But, uh, oh, I would like to see some Dark Templar. And I wonder if we are going to be getting, ooh, a probe here. Going to put down a proxy pylon, but the uh, Marauders do see it. Of course, the Marauder up here does have the Zelnaga Watchtower, so he was able to see this probe and everything he was doing. And that pylon is going to go down now that both Marines and Marauder are attacking it. And Nanny was forced to cancel it. So because of the map control that uh, Moro has right now, I think it might be difficult for him to get any of these Dark Templar in. But uh, wisely, he is taking his expansion uh, in the well-defended area by his natural here. And ha, ah, just the Dark Shrine's finished. I don't see any Dark Templar in production right now. Uh, he's not supply locked quite yet. I don't think Dark Templar are only two. Yes, he does have uh, lots of... Wow, he's going for Robotics Bay now, so it looks like he's not actually going to use this Dark Shrine for much. Um, he does have two out on the field, but they are making their way up to the Zelnaga Watchtower, and please don't attack, please. Okay, good. I would like to see this catch Moro off guard. Not that I'm not a fan of Moro, but I just love DTs. So we're going to follow these DTs and see how many kills they get. Dark Templar, phenomenal. And I like the fact that they actually have two different animations. Uh, so really smart here by Nanny. One taking to his natural and one to the main. So he, if he does have enough energy for a scan, which he does, he's going to be forced to choose one or the other. And these Dark Templar are just awesome. The guy with the scythe here is already up to seven kills. He's a mentor. And the uh, disciple here with just the one knife or whatever, a side blade, is only four but uh, the Dark Templar here now with 10 kills, just knocking away these supply depots. And uh, he does have enough, almost enough energy for a scan. And he's in the right area. This Dark Templar will get killed off. He just wants to get a couple more SCVs. And I think he died with about 11 kills. But this other Dark Templar here just swiping away at the Orbital Command. It is on fire. Poor guy here with the Psyblade. Little does he know that this Orbital Command is probably just going to fly away right away. Another Dark Templar was in the base, forced to scan there, didn't get many kills, um, and wow, that command center does go down, so he did not lift it off. Very nice job by Moro here, sacrificing all of his tech labs by um, lifting off and actually just walling off with barracks. So these barracks are going to take forever to go down. And uh, just swiping away at all of them right now. He does have two more Dark Templar on the field. Both of these guys have the side blades. No sights for them. And now that he does have enough energy, or does he? Oh, there's a turret there, so he's okay. So the turret now is going to actually protect both ramps. I think he'll be fine. He doesn't see that Dark Templar there. If he's paying attention, he can see the uh, little ripples, but he's not moving at all. And it looks like Moro's just gearing up to get back in production. He's a little bit behind on the worker count. If we look right now, uh, we're, he's about 20 food behind, and the income tab shows that... <laughs> Oh, wow, he is like 40 SCVs behind right now. I really think that uh, Naniwa's caught him off guard here. I don't think there's going to be anything that um, Moro can do here to pull himself back in the game. He does still, or sorry, he does not have control of these Zelnaga Watchtowers. And it looks like these Dark Templar are just going to come out and slaughter some of these units. Uh, he does get to see that Moro is heading for the back door, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And this Dark Templar here is just getting ready to swipe at this Marauder. Takes one swipe. Probably going to get a second swipe before a scan goes off. Uh, he does have enough energy for two scans right now. One Marauder might die. A single kill. But uh, he is going to take out these rocks and get right into the natural expansion. Uh, ooh, Nanny is supply locked. This could hurt him. But he's still 40 food up and like 30 harvesters up. Uh, Guardian Shield goes up. A bunch of units just stim up. Uh, the Marines and Marauders take out the Dark Templar that was there with a scan, but another one comes in, waiting for that scan to dissipate before he moves in. And I think if Nanny plays his cards right here, he will be fine. Charge is almost finished. Once it does, those Zealots are going to get in there right away, and uh, they are able to just get in and pick off some of those Marauders. And I love when Marauders get killed by Zealots. They get, like, chopped in half. <clears throat> How phenomenal is that? More Dark Templar being warped in. Uh, this guy's got the scythe. I like the guy with the scythe better than the guy with the scythe blade. So much better. It looks so funny when they run now. But uh, anyway, Moro here was trying to push in at the front too. Was not able to do so. Um, bringing his units back up to the or back up to the back. Uh, he's going to re-engage here. This Dark Templar is just harassing him. He doesn't have enough energy for a scan. He's rebuilding the command center. The guy with the scythe here is just up to two kills, still a disciple. Needs to just one-shot these marines. They do not have the shield, so they cannot withstand a full... Oh, yes, they can. No, they cannot. They do not have... 
no shield and no armor, so they do get one shot. But uh, they are already stimmed, so they're going to be hurting as it is. The scan by now is ready, and he's getting a Ghost Academy up. I do like this. If you didn't know, EMP can reveal Dark Templar or any hidden units. Uh, he does walk in the range of that turret, and that Dark Templar takes all the shield damage and is forced to walk out. And right now, Nanny looks to be pushing forward. His Colossi and Storm are on the way. He's just getting his Forge up now. He doesn't have an attack upgrade. I think that should have started a long time ago, but he's already at a great position. 126 food to, six to 56, and now just taking his third base as well. So Nanny in a great position, playing safe. He knows he has a clear, clear advantage on top of Moro right now, but he does not want to give that up. He doesn't want to sacrifice any units to a bad EMP and uh, a bad stim or something. He just does not want to lose those units. Uh, still using a Marauder here just to scout out, make sure nothing crazy is going on. He was going to try to stop off by this Zalnaga Tower, but that Zealot is, with the charge is going to be able to get in close. One more charge, and I think he should kill that Marauder. Oh, he just can't quite catch up to him with Stim, though, and that Marauder might kill him, and oh, that Zealot's going to die. Yes, he does die almost instantly when that Marauder does get taken out as well. And like I said, they just get split in half. That is so cool. If you guys don't have a computer that can display those kind of effects, um, well, at least this stream can show you the effects. But anyways, um, Nanny here does have quite a few Templar. He's got three out on the field, and he does have Psystorm researched already. Kaidar and Amulet is about halfway done, but he wants to Chrono Boost that out. That upgrade is so awesome for Protoss players. You cannot go wrong with Kaidar and Amulet just for how awesome it is defensive, and how awesome it is just uh, even to warp in units offensively as well. But uh, there's a couple ghosts in the army here. They have lots of energy for EMPs. Uh, I think the one does. EMP goes down, and that Dark Templar does get taken out. I don't think it's really the best form uh, or usage of EMP, but it does reveal them long enough to get taken out. Uh, would like to see a Raven out in the field just because he knows, the f or knows that Nanny is uh, incorporating some Dark Templar into his army. And uh, he would probably be, it would be very effective for him to have those in his army right now. Of course, point defense drones as well can nullify any stalkers, but he's only got two stalkers? Wow. So an immortal zealot high templar colossi army is just going to pincer him in from the back. If he can uh, stim up here, he might take out this nexus, but he's not stimming in, he's just running in. Now the stim goes down, but the units are almost dead. That cannon and those zealots just take them out so quickly. And Moro does GG when he loses that army, so... Uh, a turn of tides here. Nanny is up three games to two going into game six, so Moro has got to pull something um, out of his green behind to keep up and get it back into game seven. So stay tuned, guys.